Hi guys, welcome to another video. Um, as always, really appreciate you um, subscribing and supporting me in my journey as an artist. So here you can see using the same old sort of brushes that I've got from my um, custom brush pack, which you guys have all got access to now. Um, I start with the uh, angled brush, I believe, just to map out some colors and then start messing around with the flat brush on top of that. I don't really know what I'm going for a lot of the time. I have a kind of an idea in my head. If you notice in one of my older videos, I actually sketched out exactly what I wanted. I was quite detailed about it. Um, and that would have actually started on paper first. And then I would have had to go at sketching it using the pencil sketcher on um, Photoshop as well. But with this, I kind of went in with the approach. And I, I've been doing that with um, quite a few of my recent paintings where I just go, right, I'm just going to lay down some paint get the color palette and, and figure it out from there. Wasn't really using much of a color palette, if I'm going to be honest, with this actual painting. Um, I just kind of had an idea in my head and you'll probably realize as this painting goes on, the colors do become a little bit extreme and I have to really tone it down because there's just, it starts to lose its sense of depth. In fact, I think you can see already that there's not really much sense of depth. Everything looks very, very flat. So that city doesn't look very far away. At this point, I wanted it to be a room, so I, I kind of felt like this would be a high-rise apartment or, or something like that. Um, but again, because I'm still figuring it out and I, I really hadn't got a, a sketch in mind, it all evolves as I, as I carry on through this whole process. What you can see, though, is I'm browsing some images now. So this is kind of... The beauty of Photoshop really is you can use your blending modes and bring in some some stock um, photos. So the, these photos I've um, got from a do Adobe, I believe, uh, Adobe Stock. I do use um, other sites like Pixabay, but I'm much more careful with those sites because sometimes those images, even though they say they're copyright um, copyright free, but they're, they're actually not. So you got to be careful with them. But a lot of the images I use now are just from uh, I pay for a subscription with Adobe Stock. So. I bring some of those in just to add a tiny little bit of um, texture or detail to uh, the image. But I don't like to make it too extreme. Um, if you notice with this one, you kind of can't see where I bought it in um, if you were to try and point it out. Um, if you'd known that I'd done it, you could obviously see where those bars are. But uh, as you can see, I've just painted over that now again. So I keep playing and messing around and bringing things in. But what I don't want to do is have it so that it looks blatantly like a photo has been bought in because I'm not going for the photorealistic look anymore as you as you already know. So I'm using the flat brush here um, with this soft light blending mode as you can see just to paint in and trying to create a bit more depth now. So I've added another layer and I'm just trying with a bit more of a desaturated colour try and push those buildings into the back but I'm struggling a little bit. I've also just used a simple brush and dotted it around using a scatter. Uh, there's a scatter setting on the actual um, brush settings on Photoshop just to try and get the idea of lights. I haven't released that brush yet, but hopefully by the time you're watching this video, I would have released it. So I'll be, I'll continue to update that brush pack with any other brushes I add. Um, but I'm going to perfect that scatter brush so that it just is a little easier to add like this idea of dotted windows and lights and everything. As you can see here, it's still not quite right yet, so I'm still working towards it. So I'm going over it with the, the flat brush again um, on the color dodge blending mode, just trying to build up those uh, windows and, and variation as well. The feedback I've got from this image has actually been really, really good, to be honest with you, um, especially the thing is I'm, not, I'm really not too keen on it. I think there's elements that I like, but there's that building in the middle which is extremely bright, which um, I was never able to really rectify. It kind of just stole the show a little bit too much. Um, so I was always fighting with it. But it was one of those where I didn't want to keep overworking it and overworking it until you know the painting died to death and I had no more passion for it. So I kind of left it where it was by the time I finished. So you can see I'm bringing a few more photos in, just distorting them, laying them out trying to add a little bit of detail. I really like this picture actually. It's really versatile, it gets that kind of 
not steampunk, but this sort of mechanical element to the picture. Um, very, very, very faint in detail, but it, but it is there and it does add a bit of um, sort of an element to it. But there you go. You see, <laughs> you see, I just got rid of most of it by, you know, making it look like there's a hole in them and it's become no longer a room now. It's kind of a bit more like a balcony. So you can see there's like a bit of brickwork on the side. So this feels like a, um, this feels outdoor now. It doesn't feel indoor anymore. I was going for an indoor feel, but it, it just wasn't working. And so I've opened that balcony out and you can see I've created some reflections in the water. Um, and I think that is actually helping to create a bit more distance as well because there's something in the mid ground. So we've got the characters and, the, and this sort of balcony in the, in the foreground. We've got all those buildings in the background and this sort of, idea of a, of a river or something in between adds a mid ground which pushes those buildings back a little bit but still struggling really because um, I think they're still a bit too saturated those buildings are they still feel a little bit too close playing around with a few photos here I, I, again these didn't work too well so I kind of got rid of them for the most part um, you can see me experimenting, but it just it wasn't happening. You can see that that um, billboard, though, started to work. And so you'll see in a bit, I'm going to bring in another photo and create another billboard, which um, which helps. Just fleshing out the, the lighting on the characters now. Um, one thing I do when I'm painting characters is, uh, again, I'm not really quite sure of the posture. It just sort of, sort of shows itself and every now and then I'll flip the canvas. If you saw, I'll, I'll, I've, I've got flip canvas set to F1. Um, and so I'll flip the canvas to just double check to make sure that it actually looks right as a posture. Same with the cats as well. So cats are, I spend a lot of time practicing drawing and painting cats just to get their postures right because animals are something I've always found very difficult to get their sort of their postures correct and their anatomy correct, but the more you do it, and because I'm being quite impressionistic here, it um, I think it works. Using the, the airbrush to add a bit of a color dodge and a bit of glow. And that's actually helping create a bit more distance and it's allowing the lighting and the, the overall mood and tone of the image to um, bleed through. You can see on the, the uh, right, Bottom right side, I've added a bit of text. It says, life stands still for nobody. Playing with the idea of adding a bit of poetry in there, really. Um, didn't work, so you can see in a bit, I'll get rid of it. Um, and it's all leading me towards somewhere. Now, a lot of these ideas, they come forward. I, I experiment with them, and then they kind of disappear. And then I realise later in later paintings that, oh, I can actually bring that idea back, and I can probably make more of it. You saw there as well, I was playing with putting a few textures over the top, which was trying to get a bit of a canvas feel to it. So there's like a physical canvas underneath, but I, it didn't work again. So I kind of got rid of that. Playing a bit more three dimensions to these buildings now, so adding shading in. So darker sides to those, some of those buildings just to get a bit more depth. Brought in an image here, that's actually... Again, if you remember for the uh, the last, one of the previous paintings I did, that's a picture of my wife. So I brought her in and just added her to a billboard and just add, try and experimenting with a bit of text just to give a bit of design to it. Still playing around with um, the, the selective colour here. So I really wasn't happy with how much I was being bombarded with colours. I mean, there's a lot of colours going on here and there's not really a, uh, what's the word? There's not really a theme going on here, which is a, becomes a bit of a struggle. And you kind of don't know where to look. So it took me a lot of time to experiment and bring bring it back a little bit. And if you look at the final, final image, which is um, the post should be around about here somewhere on, on this page, um, you can see I changed it even more. Um, and just toned it down a little bit. Here's me experimenting with framing as well, which is kind of seeing what worked and what didn't work.
now you can see I've I really desaturated those buildings now, really pushed them into the back, but because there's still a lot of detail on them, it's not quite worked. Um, it works on certain elements of it, but not all of it, unfortunately. But anyway, um, hope you enjoyed that. And as you can see, I'm hopefully going to improve over time. So um, you've not seen the last of this style. Okay, thanks guys. And I'll, I'll catch you soon.